Hello and welcome to Mustard Seed Recording Studio's three-part series on editing audio timing with Studio One's version 2 Bend Audio. In my experience with using modern DAWs to edit audio timing over the last five years, I've noticed a lot of frustrations with people around using the tools and why they would even want to use this, why would not just re-record the track or get a better musician. Sometimes that's not practical or the musicians already left or perhaps this is something you recorded quite a while ago and with that the just the frustration of using the tools which were kind of awkward to use or somebody might have the misconception that all I had to do was press a button and it would solve the problem um, that clearly wasn't the case but I think we finally have broken through that barrier and studio one has finally made it uh, very easy to use timing tools so with that, let's go ahead and look at three separate scenarios of fixing audio timing issues with Studio One's Bend Audio. So for example, let's say we just got done doing a recording and it has some timing issues. So let's just go through the scenarios. One is, um, first scenario is adjusting the transients to each other. This is what I call the human conforms to human. Typical scenarios would be one musician has a strong groove. But uh, maybe the others are sloppy. You want to get the bass player to line up better with the with the drummer. Um, that's a typical scenario of using a groove tool. Or maybe it's just uh, there's an error in the performance, and you want to move uh, a chord here or there, a bass note here or there. It's very good for just fixing the errors in the in the actual recording. Second scenario is one I use most often, which is called beat tempo mapping. Uh, it's really the the computer conforms to the human. So this is where you're saying the human's tempo is right. Now, computer, I want you to follow the human. And this is typically used, like the scenario I just mentioned, that you know people come in and you want to add pre-recorded loops to a natural recording. Uh, they're not used to recording to a tick track. Uh, they want to, they've got a good strong groove, and you want to be able to add to that. It's also used for remixing. We're adding additional tracks to uh, previously recorded music. Maybe you want to add a whole Latin section into a previously recorded, you know, rock song. Uh, DJs use it for mashing songs where they get two songs to match together in terms of their tempo or the groove. And it's also used for uh, mapping audio cues and music in the video world uh, post-production to line up the tempo map up to scenes in the music. And the third scenario is uh, just quantizing against the computer's tempo map. So this is human conforms to the computer. So this is saying, Know your performance, so I want it to be it to be exactly like the computer would play. So typically using electronic music, dance music, the loops are already quantized to a particular strong groove or or absolutely perfect timing. And maybe you want to add a you know maraca or tambourine part or something to it, and you want to take that live recording and and snap it to that um, previously recorded loops. And before we get we dive into this in detail, I just want to mention that all these scenarios obviously can be used together. I typically use two and then apply one or three as I'm using it. All three can be used, so they're not mutually exclusive. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it and go into the details of how to do this with Studio One. Okay, some basics before we get started here. Uh, first thing is the um, audio bend panel button is right here. Toggle it on and off. It defaults to above the above the uh, arrangement area. I'm going to go ahead and detach it so that we just have it down here by where we're working, so you can see it better. This is where the bend tool is. It can be accessed with uh, number seven on your keyboard. And the next thing we need to do is detect the transients. So I'm going to go ahead and detect the transients and run a detection. Now uh, I'll let you go ahead and listen to what we're listening to here. This is. You notice that uh, with the standard mode here, it didn't actually pick up that first beat, downbeat of the song where the bass comes in. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on here, and the transient difference wasn't enough for it to pick up. So we can adjust the, the default threshold, which is 80% to something else, to see if we can get it. We see we can get a lot of different transients to show up, but they're not exactly on that bass note the way we want it to be. And we're getting a, a lot of other extraneous ones there. So let's see if we're going to try another analysis mode here. I'm going to set this to sensitive. 
go ahead and hit analyze. There it is right on the beginning of that note where we wanted it to be uh, with very few side uh, extra transients um, involved. So that is an improvement for this particular kind of music. This is a complex, already premixed song. You know, if this was a drum part or you know a bass part, it might be easier for it to detect with a standard analysis. Next thing I want to just point out is the time stretch algorithms. Uh, it's defaulting to drums. It uses Elastic Pro's um, time stretching algorithms. Uh, this one is great for drums, transient, um, bass, polyphonic. Can stretch a more complex music that has chords and harmonics going on in it. Uh, solo works great for uh, maintaining the format sound while you're stretching the, the audio so that the format doesn't get stretched and change pitches at the same time. And auto bend is the default mode is perfect for when you're uh, moving transients around. The next thing we'll do here is we'll go ahead and pick the bend tool and we'll just move these real quick and show you that when you when you move it to the left it compresses this audio, it turns green and this audio is, is uh, stretched. So the colors uh, are very handy to just remind you that something has been stretched or compressed and it's real handy to look down at a track and see that you've aligned something and it reminds you that that one has been processed. The other things here were the action is quantized. This is saying we're going to we're going to be expecting to quantize these particular transients. You can also set it to slice so that it actually when you take a, an action and apply, and apply it, it will slice that action. You know, and that's great for drums where you want to, you don't want to necessarily stretch this, the sound, uh, but you just, you can move it around based on those very distinct transients. The rest of this stuff we'll go through as we get into more complex uh, scenarios. So just to recap, we've got, uh, we had a right mouse click on this guy to generate the transients, detect the transients. We brought up our, uh, our panel here and our bend tool is right here. Okay, in this first example, we're just going to line up two musicians to each other. Uh, first, listen to the drummer. Now, this drum beat, for example, has been recorded with a 60% swing to it. Now let's add the bass player. Notice player one is not quite in time with the drummer and two, he's playing a straight beat, not a swing beat. So we're just gonna manually line up a few beats here and get these guys to be syncopated. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just go in here and delete a couple extra transients that have been generated. At the beginning of some of those things and we'll snap that guy in there in place. Move this guy over there. I'm gonna go ahead and move this one all the way up to there. Now you notice these two don't snap to each other. That's because the um the quantize uh grid is set to a, a straight grid with no swing fill to it, but we know that this is a swing drummer, so I'm going to have to actually set the swing level and watch as I do this. You'll see swing lines, actually, the lines actually grow. See that? Kind of neat. So the grid lines actually directly reflect your swing settings, which is nice. I'm just going to adjust this out to about there. It's like it's somewhat lined up with that. I'm just kind of visually lining up those lines with where the actual drum beat handed. Now when I snap to it, it snaps to that. So that's kind of a handy thing to do, just to visually line those things up. Go ahead and snap a few of these other ones here manually, and we'll just listen to that now. In. Okay, so there is basically... A, We've lined up the bass player to play a swing feel. So that's an example of lining up transients by hand, and we're going to try to do the same thing now with the groove tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the groove tool to see what we can do to line these two musicians up. Uh, so here we have the drums again. Playing a 
a swing beat. And this is a bass player just playing a straight beat. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear that out. Grab this groove right here. Drag it in there. And there you see the transients. Now what it's done, it's going to use these transients and all of these transients to snap to. So that is a, a mirror image of those transients there. The buffer or the pool, whatever you want to call that. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this track here and see if I can get it to groove to that those settings and I'll hit the apply and it moved some but not all of them so um most in most cases if the if the two grooves are completely different you're probably not going to get them to line up pressing of the apply button once uh you may have to play around with it a little bit and then eventually do it manual but I'm going to show you how to get a little more aggressive here now what it uses is what kind of a window does it use to um decide how far to throw those notes. It's actually using the grid to determine that. Uh, so if I set this all the way out to like a half note, be pretty aggressive at it, go back over to the groove and reapply it, boom, it moves some of these ones even further in that were greater than a quarter note off of where they should have been. So let's see what that sounds like. So it's getting closer. I'm just going to go ahead and manually move a couple of these into place so you can see that it is clearly snapping to those grids. Now watch this one. It doesn't, there's no snap there until all the way over here, boom, and then it snaps in. And that, you know, just proves to you that it's using that as a snap. There we got the two grooves to line up, but it wasn't. It was through a couple of uh, iterations of the apply tool, as well as applying the groove, as well as doing some manual adjustments. Let's see how we do on this bass beat over here. This one is. Also a straight beat uh, with some triplets in it, but we'll go ahead and uh, see how it does. Go ahead and select that one and hit apply. And it moved a couple. And let's go ahead and change this for a little resolution around here a little bit and see if that helps. And it moved something there, but I don't know if that helped or not. So I got this one lined up, this one lined up, that. This one here didn't allow. I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and do a couple of manual adjustments here. There you go. It's, it's grooving with the drummer. So that's the groove tool. It works very good if the grooves are fairly close together you may have to do some manual adjustments or adjusting of the window and the uh, uh, granularity of the window to, see, to get it to work a little better so now that we've successfully lined up two musicians natural feel to each other using both the manual and the groove tool let's go ahead now and jump into part two of the series which is tempo mapping which will allow us to map the computer's time map to the actual flow of the music.